Hello, Emily Halland. Welcome back to the Red Studio. It's me, Mr. Gessler. No, really, it's me, Mr. Gessler. Uh, if the Red Studio doesn't exactly look like the Red Studio, that's because I rearranged my furniture a little bit. A friend of mine gave me this beautiful couch behind me, which also happens to be red. So I figured as long as I'm rearranging my face, I might as well rearrange my furniture as well. So if I just turn the camera to the side like this, you'll see the old view with some lighting moved around a little bit. Yeah, still the Red Studio. One hundred submissions, guys. We did it. Congratulations. And who is the one student that tipped us over the edge? I'm not going to use last names because lots of people watch these videos. A drum roll, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nexi. Yeah! Nexi, if you were here right now, I'd give you a piece of gum or a pencil or something like that. I don't know. A soda. Bag of chips. Yeah! And just for insurance, Victoria put us even further over the edge with a 101st submission. Thank you very much, Victoria. While I'm at it, a shout out to the 31 fourth grade students who helped us to reach our goal. Out of those 31 students, 20 of them got perfect scores. That's pretty impressive, fourth grade. And the rest of you got good scores as well. This is not easy material, so thank you for jumping in. Fifth grade, of the 35 students who submitted the assignment, 27 of you got perfect scores. And sixth grade, of the 35 of you who submitted the assignment, 29 got perfect scores. Good job, guys. Being the 100th assignment is cool and all, but I also want to recognize Natalie, who was the very first student to submit the assignment. And Ben was right behind her, literally 2 minutes and 23 seconds behind her. Sorry, Ben, you were so close. There are 11 students who submitted this assignment on the very first day, and they are, in correct order, Natalie, Ben, Tim, Grace, Maggie, Dylan, Logan, Samantha, Jacob, Zeta, and Farah. Today we're going to look at a website called Groove Pizza, and I'm going to show you how to use it. In fact, you're looking at my screen in real time right now. See, there's my mouse. Let's start right here at the pizza, and I'm going to get a close-up of this, because if you don't understand it, it's going to be hard to make a drumbeat exactly the way you want to. You may remember that in a previous video we talked about dividing a pizza into 16 parts, and that's exactly what's going on here. I want you to think of slices 1 through 4 as being one whole beat, and then slices 5 through 8 are a whole beat, and 9 through 12, etc. So we have four beats in this circle. Surprise. Let's back up and see what happens to the circle when we hit the play button. Hmm. Nothing much. Makes those little uh, dot square type things flash. Well, what's actually happening is there's an invisible hand, like the hand on a clock, that's going around this circle, and it's playing whatever notes are in its path. And right now there are no notes in its path. Just so you can see this clearly, I'm going to fill in every spot on the outside circle. Then when I click play, it's going to start at one and make its way around the pizza playing each note as it goes. Frankly, that's kind of annoying, but it does help us see how this circle works. We can do the same thing with the inner circle, which is more of a hi-hat sound. This sound is a little more tolerable. And remember, slices one through four are one beat, so let's try putting one drum sound on each beat using one of the outer circles. I'm gonna go with this kick drum right here. I'm gonna put a sound on one, and then Slice number five starts beat two. Then I'm gonna put another one on nine and another one on 13. So now I have one sound on each beat. Let's see what that sounds like. Still annoying, but at least now we can see how this works. We have four beats and we divide the whole thing into 16 parts. We can also add a snare with two sounds on a beat. That would mean we're gonna put one on one and on three and on five and on seven. You know what, there's a tool for this. I'm just gonna click and add this right here. Boink. Okay, that's really annoying. Let's thin things out a little bit. On the left side of the screen, you're gonna see something called specials. I'm gonna click on that. And there's one that says Billy Jean. And before I play it, let's look at the shape and see if we can figure out what it's going to sound like. In the first beat, slices one through four, there's only one sound on the outside circle. So that's going to be ta, one sound on a beat, right? The outside circle is that low kick drum. In the innermost circle, in the first four slices, we have two sounds on a beat. So that's going to be our ta-di sound. 
the innermost circle is that high t -t 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 sound. If we only had this one beat, it would sound like this. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Interesting. In beat two, there's one sound in the middle circle. That's the snare drum. And there are still two sounds on the hi-hat. Nothing on the kick drum. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's actually snowing outside. Day before Mother's Day. Here's some good news. Beat three is exactly the same as beat one. I have one sound on the outermost circle, two sounds on the innermost circle. Let's see what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And beat four is exactly the same as beat two. One sound on the middle circle, two sounds on the innermost circle. So altogether we have this beat. Now, if the circle model is just too messy and hard for you to comprehend, you can go just below it to the little square model. It might be easier for you to understand. Now, whatever you've done to the circle graph, you automatically do to the square graph as well. So here it's gonna be exactly the same. Sections one through four are your first beat. Sections five through eight are your second beat. Nine through 12 is your third beat. And 13 through 16 is your fourth beat. You can change things here. It's gonna change them in the circle as well. We can still see on this graph that the top line, which is the hi-hat, is playing two sounds on every beat. You can see these little two red dots in each section. And the kick drum and the snare drum are taking turns playing one sound on a beat. You can see that between the yellow and the orange. They take turns, one to each beat. Watch the graph as it plays. I don't know if you noticed, but I am so easily distracted. Sorry, so back to our square graph. I think that in the square graph, it might be easier to see some of the rhythms we've been talking about. For example, if I fill in every single sound with one drum, we're basically putting four sounds on a beat. Takadimi, 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 takadimi. These would be 16th notes, and it's no coincidence that there are 16 of them. Then we can also try some of these mixes of eighth and sixteenth notes. So I can take out just the last sound in each beat, and we basically have our taka D with the long sound at the end. Taka D, taka D, taka D, taka D. I can also take out the second sound in every measure, like this, and that gives me the ta dimi with the long sound at the beginning. Ta dimi, ta dimi, ta dimi, ta dimi. I can also take out the third note in each group, like this and we end up with our middle note being the longest note. Taka mi taka mi taka mi taka mi. This is all so fast. Let me try slowing it down a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go over here to the bottom left-hand corner where it says BPM, that stands for beats per minute. I'm gonna slow it down to like 85. And let's try all of these. Taka di mi, taka di mi, taka di mi, taka di mi, taka di, taka di, taka di, taka di, ta di mi, ta di mi, ta di mi, ta di mi, taka mi, taka mi, taka mi, taka mi. Let's look at some of these other features. We already explored specials, but there may be some other things you enjoy in here. You can take Billy Jean and then select this drum set in the middle of the circle. That's gonna give you some other options. For example, you might switch to techno and just listen to the exact same drum beat with some different sounds. You may also have noticed that at the bottom of the screen there are four circles. If you have one circle filled in and you click the next one, it's gonna make it exactly identical. I'm gonna select a different drum beat. I'm gonna to go to trap because I think that's a pretty cool sound. And you'll notice that every circle is a little bit different. And then it loops back around to the beginning. You can also start from scratch. You can go to specials and click plain and then just choose the drum set that you like and start filling it in. You can also take a little shortcut. Go to shapes in the left hand and you saw me do this earlier. You can take any one of these shapes and just put it into whichever drum you prefer to hear it in. 
Uh, I think I want to put this one in the center. That gives me a nice foundation to work with. I can also take this four and put it in the next one like this. That's cool for one measure. Don't want to do it in the next measure too. So I'm going to click this. It's going to copy it over and I'm going to start changing it up. I'm going to move this to here. I'm going to move this to here. Cool. Same as before. I'm going to move it to here, but I'm going to change some things up. Let's see. Let's try that. Cool. Uh, let's put this one. If we do this one, it's going to be the exact same as the last one. And that's a little bit chaotic for me. So I'm going to change that back to our simple beat. There we go. Now, if I start at the very beginning, we'll hear what all these sound like together. As you saw before, you also have options at the bottom left hand. You can change the tempo. BPM stands for beats per minute. You can slow that down. You can speed it up just by clicking and dragging. Swing is something that we won't talk about yet. It's a little bit complicated to understand until we really grasp rhythm well. Slices, well, right now it's set at 16. If I turn down the number of slices, it just gives me fewer sections to work with. And this is not really very helpful. Because if you select slices that are anywhere like 15 or 11 or seven or such silly primary numbers as that, you're gonna find it very hard to follow along. You're welcome to try it. So make me a drum beat, make it original, or you can imitate some song that you know on the radio. When you're done, if you like what you've done, you can share it with me like this. Go to the left side of the screen. There's a button that says share. There are all these options up here that you don't need to worry about. At the very bottom, it says share link. If you click on the link itself, Copy that link and send it to me in an email. I'd love to hear it. So you're not gonna see an assignment on Google Classroom this week, but you are gonna see a couple of links to YouTube videos about a guy named Martin Mullen. He invented a machine called the Wintergarten Marble Machine. It is made of wood and Legos and marbles, and it plays musical instruments. The first video is the machine itself playing a song, and the second video is Martin Mullen explaining a little bit about how the machine works. It is fascinating. I've watched it more than once. Check it out. Guys, I miss your faces, and my face is cold. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.